times in Cleveland ahead as we join you by the lakeshore here at Cleveland Brown Stadium. But today, two AFC teams set to do battle. It should be a good one, as it'll be the Houston Texans taking on the Cleveland Browns. And they will elect to not bring this one out as our first drive will begin at the 25. Houston set to take over. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. A man coming off a great rookie year, it's Damian Pierce. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. Nice chunky yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. Second and six, just inside the 30. Stroud now on second down. Over the middle complete, it's Pierce. Short completion, just four yards. And now that sets up third and two. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. The linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. That's to the veteran. It's Robert Woods. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So, Charles, yeah, take nothing away from this young man under center because I know people think he's got a very bright future in this league, but... I have to figure the defensive coordinators love the thought of squaring off against a rookie quarterback. And especially if they have guys they can put together a game plan with that's going to confuse, disguise a lot of coverage, make this kid think a little bit. Because in college, he's seen a lot of things. Let's, let's not get it wrong here. But at the same time, in the NFL, you can do so much more because of the athletes you have, because of their football IQ. And don't forget, you're going to throw a couple extra rushers at him as well. See if he can handle the pressure when those guys come at him. Hand off right side to Pierce. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Two yards, good enough for a first. But we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet. Sees the short yardage runs and goes to one of those. First down, they go right back to Pierce. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sit through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. Ball on the 39. Here's the second and eight. They'll run out of the gun with Singletary. And a good push up front, and he's able to navigate his way down inside the 30. Ten yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. Now to change things up, Stroud will throw it. Under pressure, and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. It was Miles Garrett that time who got in there and brought him down. Hindsight is 20-20, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. We're scoreless after one. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. On second down, it's Stroud. Short throw into the hands of Jordan. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. They need 12 here. It's third down. Stroud on third down now. 
And he finds his target. It's Schultz. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. They're just going to run a drive route here with their tight end. Let him get upfield about 10 yards and then move toward the middle of the field. This ball's right on target, and it results in a first down. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. First and 10, it's Pierce. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Denzel Ward, the number four pick in the 2018 draft, making the tackle from his corner spot. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. And the slot man goes in motion left. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And able to get him inside the five here, just inside the five to about the four. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. The impressive opening drive continues and just space being created by those guys up front. We're seeing this the same way, aren't we? We are seeing an offensive line as this game gets started, as it starts to unfold, that they are dominating the line of scrimmage. Stroud now on third and two. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. Touchdown! Devin Singletary from four yards out. And the Texans post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And the Texans take a 7-0 lead. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. the 32 now. Here's first and 10. Now it's Watson. A little juke. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. You know what I like about that play? He didn't try to do too much on first down. He took what the defense gave him, put together a solid game to bring up second and manageable. Now they have a couple of plays to pick up just a few yards and a new set of downs. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Deshaun Watson, so multi-dimensional, able to scramble for the first. Facing second and short, that gives you a chance to go for a bigger play through the air. But I think he said to himself, why don't I just handle this one? Got all the yards you needed, and then some, and made that snap a huge success. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts, as they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. Now Watson. That's caught by his tight end, Jordan Akins. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts. 
as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. First down line at the 34 here on third down. Here's Watson. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Here's second and 10. Watson looks to throw again. And he's got his receiver, Cooper. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. Back to throw, Watson. Locating Bell on the sideline. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. And the ball situated at the nine. Second and goal. Again, it's Watson. And Joku pulls this one in. He's got it for a Cleveland touchdown. A great play there in the final seconds of the first half. And the Browns have a chance to tie the game here in the final seconds of the half. Now Cade York for the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. team has scored 7-7 seven, seven here as the kicks away. Tank Dell now to return it. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And the Texans going to get the football one final time here in this first half. And only six seconds on the clock, so time likely for just one play. see another play here as they take the knee and head into the intermission all tied. So thanks to the late touchdown, it's a time ball game here heading to break. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, and we welcome you back now. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon getting set for quarter number three here. From his end zone, it's Demetric Felton. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result, and he opted for the touchback. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? 
Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic, no need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Now that's the way you want to start a drive. Talk about a tone setter as well as a playbook opener. Now if you want to take a big shot over the top, you're all positioned to do so. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Here's Watson. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Eight yards that time, able to take off, and the result is a first down. As he came to the line of scrimmage, he knew he didn't need much to reset the chain, so when he saw the space he needed, no hesitation. He went to the marker and got his guys a first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. To throw is Watson. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Well, it looked like a quick hitter, a three-step drop. But when it's not there, what do you do? He elects to try and escape through the mass of bodies up the middle, and he does so and picks up positive yardage. From the 48-yard line, here's second and two. And Chubb will try the middle here. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let it pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 44-yard line. They run it again with Chubb. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Now that's on the guard, Wyatt Teller. They'll try the air now with Watson. And here is a leaping catch. He pulled it in. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. 25 yards that time. Watson now to throw. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. Fast, slow, it doesn't matter. If you give a quarterback enough room to escape, he can hit you for a big game. You've got to give him a little more focus moving forward. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. His running ability has been an extra dimension of their game plan thus far. For once, though, he doesn't create any magic against a front that's prepared for him to try and take off. On second down, here's Watson. And that one knocked away and incomplete. Nice job defensively on what will be the final play of the third quarter. So a little extra time to ponder this third and goal as we play three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. A lot of pressure here for Cade York. This to break our fourth quarter tie. York able to send this one through. And they take the lead here now at 10 to seven. 
So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? He sends this one away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And now out comes Houston. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. They'll throw it with Stroud here, first and 10. Finds his man, it's John Mechie. And he's gonna get a good gain of nine here, up to the 34. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant, a lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Pierce with a motivated run there, and no surprise he's motivated this season after a late injury robbed him of a 1,000-yard campaign last year and potentially the rookie of the year. Even still, the fourth-round pick outplayed his slot with over 900 yards in 13 games. On first down, here's Stroud. Oh, Brown, a nice catch. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. A gain of nine brings up second and one at the 47 yard line. Here's second and a yard. Throwing now is Stroud. Caught by Woods. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 39. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too. Looking for Woods again, and he finds him. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. Come on, let's go. That's a nice job right there, partner, because they were able to work down the middle of the field, working in the seams, because I think defensively, they were guarding the sidelines, trying to keep them from getting out of bounds. They took what they gave them, and it was successful. This is first and 10. Stroud to throw it. That's going to be caught. And the Texans are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. Uh, he's been quiet all afternoon. He may have just come up with a play of the day right there, though. Obviously, it's not the volume in which you get done. It's the quality, and that was a quality catch right there. Now first and goal. Now Stroud. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. Point in the game. So Zadarius Smith there getting in and bringing him to the ground. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has. But in his defense, he hadn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense. I got it. You yeah. see what I did there? Yeah. He needs better protection, that's for sure. And he wisely will throw that one away. 
Third and long coming up defensively. You pressure the quarterback or drape all over the passing lane? Yes, that's exactly both. what you do. It's both <laughs> because they're not mutually exclusive. They may have been at one time in football, but not anymore. You want to have that pressure. And if you have a big time pass rusher, send him after the quarterback and then make sure you blanket the field. And he'll get this underneath to Singletary. I'm all surprised right here. They've got three timeouts left. The clock's running down, and they aren't using them. Those timeouts do you no good at home. Use them now. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And here come the whistles and a timeout with seven seconds left. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. So on fourth down, Texan kicker Kaimi Fairbairn comes on. This to potentially send us to overtime. And his kick is good. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. I tell you, the life of a kicker. He has not been called on the entire game. He's over there by the net, but they send him out here in the fourth quarter and say, hey, go tie the game, will you? And guess what? He comes through. I just don't know how they do it. I really don't. These cats are a different breed from you and me. That's a pressure kick, but that one was never in doubt. So overtime on the horizon, barring a wild finish here as the kick's away. This taken in right around the goal line. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Ready to take over again on offense, out comes Cleveland. Tie game, and barring something incredible here, we're likely headed to overtime. What I would do is either hand it off inside or more likely I take a knee and let the clock run out. Because if I'm back there trying to throw and a sack happens, the ball comes free, I can lose the game here. If I get to overtime, I can still win it. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. And we need overtime to decide this one after four quarters of play. We're all even. The extra session in a moment. This is the NFL on EA Sports. So the Texans will have the first opportunity here in the overtime session as we are back underway. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Now comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Stroud to the air on first and 10. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. Just a gain of a couple there. 
And it'll be second down. A little dinking and dunking that they're doing. It, at some point, is it appropriate to maybe take a shot? It is if you feel good about it. But otherwise, you do what a coach told me a long time ago. Take what they give you, but make them tackle. In other words, get it to one of your guys in space. If he makes someone miss, that could turn into the big play you're looking for. This is caught. It's Woods. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 37. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Forget height and catch radius. When you run the fade really well, run down the defender, kind of take him a little bit towards the middle of the field, and then fade to the sideline and give your quarterback some space, it can be executed that well, just as we saw. And this is caught. It's Brown. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. Titus Howard, right tackle, the man flagged for that one. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Stroud off the play fake. Looking deep here for Mechie. And this one almost intercepted. Had a chance to come down with it in the end zone, but could not hang on. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. For the Browns, a nickel set here on third down. Here's Stroud. He'll get the hook up there to Woods. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. And they will take the lead at 13-10. to 10. That was a big risk here in overtime. It's send him out to fire away from long distance, but he knocks it through to give him the lead. Edgy, edgy, don't you think? Because if he misses there... Ball goes to the spot of the kick, correct? Yep. And guess what? That only leaves about, what, 20 yards or so for, for them to go downfield and be in position themselves. So you have confidence in it, and you have confidence in your defense to so go ahead and let him kick that one. field goal on that opening drive of overtime will that hold up we'll find out as the kicks away and able to get this across the 20 but not much further as he's dropped it to 23 yard line heading out as the cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here well it's pretty simple now they need a field goal out of this drive to extend overtime or obviously charles a touchdown to win it yeah, and I'm taking the defense's perspective on this one, partner, because now they know with a three-point lead, they can afford to give that up because you just keep playing, right? Overtime gets extended. But if you give up the touchdown, it's game over. So on offense, every play you make, you've got to try and get just a little bit more out of each one in order to try and get to the end zone because they're going to play everyone back, keep everything in front. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Pass complete to Chubb. Oh, and that a very short game. They do get a first, but short pickups, not what they're looking for. 
But that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that? Second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Now Watson. And this will be caught at the 30. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. And with just two seconds remaining, the timeout is called here at OT. And you just had the feeling when they took the field for this drive, they meant business. They knew a field goal would keep the game going, but a touchdown would end it here in overtime. And that nearly did it right there. What a play to put them in position to win this ball game. Well, Watson will step away, and out comes Cade York to handle this fourth down field goal try for the Browns. And now the Texans want to call another timeout. So we'll take a break with them and be right back. Cade York on now for the field goal. This to potentially get out of here with a tie. And he got it. It's good. They answer with a field goal of their own to send this game into sudden death. One overtime. How about two? We need another. We're still even. We'll switch sides and have that second overtime in just a moment. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This taken in at the goal line. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Houston set to take over. I cannot imagine how these players and coaches feel, Charles. <laughs> My palms sweating up here in the booth now as we go to the third drive of overtime. And as we know from here on out, any points win this football game. I'll throw you a towel as well, partner. I've got one for myself, but let's face it. Our nerves, our pressure, nothing compared to what's going on on that field. Both of the field goal kickers active here early. Can one of them become the hero and end this thing? The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Pierce takes it straight ahead. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you gotta know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling him in the huddle right now. From just shy of midfield, here's second and a couple. Play action, Stroud now. And he's taken down, this will be a Brown sack. Miles Garrett able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. The last run went so well for them. Maybe they should have just handed it off right here, too. Instead, the quarterback ends up keeping it. The defense is right on it. And what's where the yardage gained on the last snap. Tough spot here. Third down and 11. Stroud looking to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Brown. And he can only manage to get this to the 45-yard line. Well short of the first. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's going to line up out right and then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a counter two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. Here's Cameron Johnston now. And in double overtime, this needs to be a good one. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. Cleveland offense making their way out. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker <laughs> trot on the field. They want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. 
I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. From the 22, here's second and eight. Watson to throw. Into the hands of Cooper. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Charles, you get into these overtime situations, that's not a bad guy to dial into. Well, when you have to have plays, especially in a spot as you just described, we're an OT, you've got to go to the guys you can trust and you know are going to make the plays. Well, they say, it's not the X's and the O's, it's the Jimmy's and the Joe's. Now Chubb running right. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. Now a second and two. Here's Watson. That's complete to Peoples-Jones. He's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake in the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. Well, the entire game coming down to this kick from Cade York. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That's their second and last timeout here in the overtime session. We'll be back. And now it all rests on the right foot of their kicker. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good. And they have won it here in double overtime. Well, Charles, a very simple mission anytime that you play on your home turf, and that is to defend your home turf. And today, that mission was accomplished. Look, every offseason, every preseason, the head coach goes in front of the team and says, the mission for the season, defend our home field every time, split on the road, and we'll be in the playoffs. That's why defending the home field is vital. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Browns, and they're happy in the dog pound, as we say so long from Cleveland.